you just got replaced. I think you just got replaced by Steve. Oh, oh yeah. Well, I don't see the screen, so. Oh, you don't see the Hello. screen? Hello. Hey. Hello. Mr. Sansweet, how are you? I'm doing fine. How are you guys? Oh, great. Great time Good. to be a Star Wars fan. Great time to be on a Star Wars podcast. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> what, you need convincing? <laughs> No, no, not with you guys. Ah, oh, all right. That's good. That's good. Well, it's it's always great to have you, and uh, we appreciate you taking the time out. We know you got a lot going on there at uh, Rancho Obi Wan, including a uh, a big um, auction with some uh, Death Stars. Yes, thirty Death Stars up for auction on the PropStore dot com site, and uh, it's our fundraiser and a fun way for fans and for the artists who all participated and i'm staring at this mass of death stars all of which i want to keep of course but that doesn't help raise the money <laughs> no no it, it kind of defeats the purpose steve if you're buying your own your i own was wondering how that was going to work <laughs> <laughs> boy we raised a ton of money with this uh, auction but we're also in debt how did that happen yeah, well, because everything's well, still in the collection. <laughs> wow, the look at these. Okay, so Jason just put some up here uh, on our screen that we could see. And, of course, Steve, you're walking around there actually in the museum itself. And uh, you're, you're by the, uh, the collection of these Death Stars. Um, tell us a little bit about how this, uh, this incredible uh, idea came about for, to get professional artists to create unique designs and takes on the Death Star. Every, you got everything there from a Death Star that looks like an exploded Vader helmet to a Fabergé-style egg of a Dianoga's lair. Uh, you got uh, R2. You have everything there. Um, so tell us a little bit about the artist, the idea, and how it all happened. Well, about a year ago, Ann and I were looking at the budget, and we saw that we weren't going to have a gala in 2019, and we were getting a little worried about the operating costs for the museum. Every nonprofit institution always has a problem when it comes to fundraising and, and funding the operations. Um, we use it for maintenance. We had to replace a roof last year. Um, there are all sorts of things that happen, some of which we expect and some of which are a, uh, a surprise uh, and usually not a good surprise. So um, we started talking about a way to be able to go out to the community, have something to offer. And we thought about the great things that had been done with Darth Vader helmets and Stormtrooper helmets, Clone Trooper helmets, Boba Fett. And we thought, can we do something like that, but that hasn't been done before? And so we came up with the idea of doing a Death Star. We discussed a lot of possibilities and came up with, well, what, what could an artist do with a basically a globe? And then we went through our list of artists who have been friends for many, many years, artists that I met through uh, fan conventions and a lot of artists who I got to become Star Wars artists, uh, licensed Star Wars artists, tattoo artists, um, people that uh, have contributed to past Rancho Obi-Wan auctions. And um, we got the Death Star made um, early last year and had a sample and it's uh it's basically as i said it's basically a 10 inch globe and um i'm holding one up here can you see it guys oh we don't have that we don't have that ability miracles of editing we'll be able to see it by the time <laughs> this gets out into the world right so it's uh it's a resin hollow death star and then we sent about 50 emails out to artists that we know and love and got back uh, yeses from a majority of them. I mean, some of them were just a little too busy doing Star Wars work, licensed Star Wars work. Imagine, imagine that. Yeah, right. Well, I, some of uh, these are uh, just, I mean, they, the range... You know, it's it's so cool because it's everyone's, you know, painting and creating from the same 
piece, but you get so much variety from you know the personalities of the artists and you know in some cases you know like i'm looking at this one that's r2d2 i mean you wouldn't even know it's a death star you know it's so cleverly disguised so it's amazing what they can do with the uh, you know little creativity and some patience and a lot of paint yeah and 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 breaking things up we have something from mick and mac Lee. That's uh, really sort of a broken Vader mask, which works perfectly. It's melded into the Death Star, and uh, it looks like Vader's head exploded. Wow. We have That'd another. Awesome. We have another one with uh, the trash monster, the Dianoga, and it's lighted inside, so you can actually see the Dianoga and the trash around it. Um, the uh, the Fabergé egg from uh, Kathy Van Bunigen in the Chicago area. Uh, Kathy, I've known Kathy for a uh, couple of decades, I think now, through the 501st. And her costuming and her fabrics and her dolls. And she's come up with this really incredible Fabergé style Death Star egg that opens up and has a, a small plasma ball inside that lights up. Amazing. Uh, I got to say, I'm loving this one of Palpatine holding the Death Star up with a you know array of force lightning around him. That is really cool. Yeah, that was done by Ben Cheese. Ben Cheese. Yeah, and it's it's basically looks like wire hangers that he's. Uh, of course, it's you don't see there's a uh, a uh, clear plastic. Uh, stand in the back that's holding up the Death Star, but it is so cleverly done that it looks like the Force Lightning is floating the Death Star and he's ready to use it. Now, Steve, were there any nope. uh, were there any ground rules, you know, for the artist? Were there certain materials that were off limits? Could it only be so big? What, what were some of the... Did they have any confines that they had to work within? In retrospect, maybe we should have. <laughs> some of the... <laughs> So there were no rules. There were there were no rules, and um, and uh, some of them are rather large. We have the uh, Christian Wagner did, and his dad did this incredible Scarif Tower, the Citadel Tower from Scarif from Rogue One, and Christian has the guy. You know, Christian does these am amazing artworks that have the reflections and the eyes, and. Um, uh, he and his dad built this, the Citadel Tower, and the Death Star spins around. It's called Stardust because there's glitter on the, uh, on the base. And he has the, the leads of, uh, of uh, Rogue One painted, their portraits painted on the Death Star. It's just an amazing piece. Just an amazing piece. Well, from our friends at, at Regal Robot and Tom Spina Designs, we've got uh, uh, a, a creature that looks like a 1950s sci-fi horror movie. Um, the skeleton skull head robot that's inside the Death Star with antenna and a big furry uh, shoulders. I mean, looks like something from Lost in Space. It's crazy. I'm lost in space. <laughs> We've known that for a long time. A long I'm time. Crossing, I'm crossing franchises 